<laughs> well, open your damn eyes in. It's the old timey country down home red state update podcast and them. Coming to you from a bunker underneath Jackie's Market in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And here they are, both of them. Hey there, everybody, this is Jackie Broll. Hey, everybody, it's Dunlap. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! What are, you, what are you so damn happy about? I stole his beer. What? I can do whatever I want to, Jackie. Shut your mouth. No, you can't. Nothing here. You can't. No. This is in America, isn't it? Oh, don't. Now, it, yes, it's in America, but this is my damn uh, market, and you need to, like, pay up for some of that beer you drink. Jackie, the question is not whether I stole this beer, uh. but whether the United States Senate or the American people should decide what to do about me stealing this beer. What? What does that got to do? I believe that the Constitution says that the people should make the decision in the presidential election uh. about me stealing this beer. Well, it ain't got nothing to do with any of that. You just you owe me for a damn beer. Sure, I'll give you one or two. Sure, every now and then I'll let you mess up and do something like that, but I can't just keep letting you steal beer over and over and over again. I got to do something to stop it. I at least got to call it out and say you ought not be stealing my beer all the damn time. Couple's fine. We're friends. Go back away, sure. On the same side, got the same, you know, have a beer or two. That's fine, but you can't just keep keep doing it over and over again. Well, I, I am going to keep doing it over and over again what? because it seems like that's what uh, Congress and uh, Chief what? Justice Roberts right. have have is the message that they're sending to me. I can steal as much beer as I want to. I may not be the president yet. And I appreciate you thinking that you need to do something, but I give to you, Jackie, that you you're thinking that you have to do something and then you're going to do this sort of useless, pointless exercise in futility with a foregone conclusion Uh. that hinged at best on Lamar Alexander, which is the same thing as a foregone conclusion, that all you're doing is increasing the cynicism in this country and making everyone realize, well, I guess Dunlap can just do whatever he wants to. I'd rather Dunlap do whatever he wants to than have to listen to uh, two more weeks of Alan Dershowitz. I may be mixing my metaphors here. I get a little confused too, because I did, would you say it that way? I, it is like go ahead and have another beer, as long as like I got to listen to Alan Dershowitz. It's hard, as I was realizing that the example set forth by the president of the United States of America means I can do whatever I want and not get in trouble. Keep it in mind. I'm a white guy that I can do whatever I want and not get in any trouble. Of course, I'm not rich. No. So there Far is from it, yeah. there is a problem there. And I'm going to go say even even so, being a white man, you are not president either. Just, I, I just, you know, just throw that out there. As white as you are, you ain't quite the, ain't quite the president. My biggest problem is that I think the president is an asshole. Uh, well, well, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to get on board and be happy. Like it's a new day in this country. It's actually kind of the same old day that white people can do whatever. Well, whatever yeah. They want to do. When it comes kind down of the to same it, old yeah. day, but it's a new day. I'm trying to get excited. We can do whatever we want. Uh, you know, if it's in the national interest, and I would say that having a beer is in the national interest. If by nation you mean me. Wow. If it's in the national interest, how can you impeach Dunlap for stealing a beer when it's in the national interest to do so? Nothing is impeachable or throw in jailable if it's in the national interest. Wow. And I think the nation deeply cares about me getting fucked up. No. Watch your mouth. I don't want to hear it put that way. Wouldn't this be a better world if we just spent two weeks listening to people talk about me being able to get fucked up even if hey, I don't have money for beer? Not with the language, but yeah. Why can't I do whatever I want then? 
Well, you're going to find out that a lot of people who do think they can do whatever they want, along with the president sitting there doing whatever he wants, there's a whole group of people. They go to these rallies. They do. They Yes, the world is made for them. The world is a better place when it's made for them and, and less so for others. I mean, that's the whole thing. But I guarantee you some of those folks are going to take it a step too far, and you're going to find out uh, you ain't president. It is a Twitter theory that this is all about. People living vicariously through the president, white straight men who've been finding out that they can't do everything they want to anymore, even though they can. Invisible perceived enemies from Starbucks Christmas cups to women in bars. Right. Everybody's an enemy to these people, and they they like this president just getting away with everything. Is there anybody who watched all this, who likes the president, who was who thought it was all made up bullshit, then watched all this or heard enough about it to go, because who really watched all of it? Heard enough about it to go, oh, shit, I guess he really did do it. And then turn away from the president or be like, oh, I guess he really did do it. That's cool. And I'm going to say it's a ladder there. Hell, when they first announced what it was, they were like saying, well, this, this ain't the Mueller report now. No, no, no. This ain't Uncle Few. This is, this is easy. People understand a shakedown. They understand. Oh, they're not too complicated. He, all he did is just, you know, it's just a, a gangster kind of, you know, they, everybody gets this and understands it, which I agree. I think people did, but they don't give a damn. People like gangsters. Like old Pompeo said, too, who gives it? The American people don't care about Ukraine. They don't care about it, is what he said, before he made that woman point out a globe or whatever and kicked out. Which, in some ways, I would say is very much true. I don't like to agree with Pompeo, but I don't, I don't think people care about Ukraine. They don't give two dams about it. Certainly Trump supporters don't. And let's be honest, if you don't like Trump, you're not really concerned about Ukraine. No matter what these nice people who went up there and testified who knows how the world works would tell us how important Ukraine is. I appreciate that information. What we don't like is that he gets to do whatever the hell he wants. Would it matter what country it was that he was shaking down? It's a lot of emotional labor on their on their parts, and we do appreciate it. There is something about holding the country to a higher standard. Used to, you can always be cynical. And I mean, unless it benefits me and that the country as a whole decides it's cool for me to walk into any store and take any beer I want. Yeah. Used to, you'd say, the country don't care about Ukraine. They don't care. If the person they like is benefiting and makes them feel better, then no, nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. This country's stupid or whatever you, you say. But then, but no, no, this is America. We come together as uh, many different people and sexes and classes and and kinds of Baptists. And we hold hands and we stand up and we sing a, a, a gospel hymn. Uh -huh. One of them gospel hymns, not like a regular hymn, but a gospel one. And we all come together and we find the goodness in our heart. We find the promise of America. And we go forward using it as a, on a, a, we go forward in a dark forest path using the promise of America as a beacon or a light. I don't, I need to do a second draft on this, but now we don't do, now everybody, we're just wallowing in it. We're Pardon wallowing yeah. in it. Yeah. No, nah, nobody cares. They're wallowing. Yeah, nobody cares. And we can win again because they must be thinking nobody cares. How can we make sure we win this thing? How can we steal this? Because I would imagine that if they just come out and said, yeah, we stole it. That no, nobody on their side would carry it. No. I guess Mitt Romney. Sword, if, he sort if of they cares. had a meeting beforehand and said, okay, Mitt Romney, you're allowed to care about this publicly. He might care about it. Yeah. If all you get for going up against Trump is to be disinvited from CPAC, I don't see why more of them didn't do it. He must be thrilled to get a weekend back. Sure. Was he going to CPAC anyway? CPAC I has turned as bad as it used to be. 
I mean, what is it now? Well, he had to go, I guess, at one time when he went, yeah, running. Oh, now it's just awful. Yeah, it's just But, like, in the last, since Trump, it's turned into, like, a a T-shirt booth in Panama City Beach. It's just. Yeah. The T-shirts are just, like, women's asses and racist slogans. Pretty much. That's everything since Trump took over, really, if you think about it, isn't it? Every, God, I used to. I know. You, you, not be, the racist slogan part. But no, I mean, there was the a lady, time. Yeah, yeah. And if I had any, I'm not trying to take credit, but if I had anything to do with Trump getting elected, I, I'm do, do whatever you want to to me, because I deserve it. I think I, a lot of people are saying that to themselves. Well, not everybody, but. Not Bernie Bros. Now everything is shaped like Karl Marx. Like Karl Marx's ass. If Bernie Bros ran Panama City Beach, it's like. Anyway. I guess some do. I haven't been to Panama City Beach in a long time. I ain't been down there either. There are a lot of Bernie signs in Panama City Beach. I guess there's some every which way you look somewhere. You know, if there's a college anywhere nearby or something, yeah, you're going to have a lot of that. Spring Bump break. Stick or something, yeah, spring it's break. Spring break. Oh, Man, yeah, a bunch been. of burning bro. They'd go down there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Lamar Alexander, I wish we had the time to do all the podcasts we talk about doing because we do that Canon podcast about the TV show Canon. Oh, we talked about it, yeah. Then maybe we do a podcast called like Lamar exclamation question mark. Lamar question mark. And we do. Like the story of Lamar Alexander. It'd be one of them podcasts you hear about. You go like, hmm, that's not. I'm not going to spend six hours listening to the story of Lamar Alexander. I wouldn't want to. We know Lamar Alexander being from Tennessee. We've known him for a long time. He used to be governor. There's just, all these things that we knew him about, uh, all that's gone. He going to be remembered for one thing, one thing only from here on out. And so be it. Remember when... He walked across the state. Fred Thompson drove across the state. Lamar Alexander, yeah, he went walking. That's the reason I like Fred Thompson better. I want a truck. He wore that red plaid shirt and looked like Jackie's. Yeah, wore that all the time, yeah. And he should have kept on walking. She just kept on walking. Walk on. So why did he, so he come out and he basically says, yeah, well, all of them twisting themselves in all sorts of pretzels just to say why they did what. And, and they, this was all, people thought, you know, they got if you got mad because you saw the his defense team writing questions to hand out to the to the uh, senators to ask, it's the same thing in this situation. They all got in a room, Mitt Rom- not Mitt Romney, well, he was in there, but they all got with, with McConnell and decided, I'm going to be this one, I'm going to do this one, and I'm going to say this, and then you say that. So that's all, this ain't, none of this ain't coming from, you know, it's from the top down. They all work this out. Folks, if you're not from Tennessee, imagine if Lamar Alexander was your least embarrassing senator. Just take it, imagine it. Now you know what it feels like. Yep. That's where we're at. Yeah, he come out and say, well, he was told to say, well, what he did, he did this. There's lots of evidence he did it, but I ain't going to, he don't need to be impeached over it. And what, what, McCaskey, she's one that was going, everybody thought she was on the fence. What'd she end up saying? Like, oh, the Senate's broke. Every, this is, everything's broken. It's all partisan. The Senate no longer works. None of this works. I can't drag this out anymore. Don't, like, I, why? You're in the Senate. You're doing it. It's your job. Say it about yourself. You're, you're it. Just make it worse. It's so bad. Why should I try to do anything about it? Like, like you call a plumber over and the plumber's like, I, I can't. This sink just doesn't work. You're the plumber. You're, I called you over here. Can you fix it? Try to fix it? It's not even like, ah, you know, it just, ah, it's just broke. It don't flush no more. You stuck with that. Yeah. It's partisan. So partisan. Everything's, you're the partisan. You, you are. Do it. Do it. 
Do it different. Make it not be partisan. What is that old saying? It starts with you sort of thing. You know, you, you can't ask for everybody to change till you change yourself on and on, all that mess. Uh, you know? can't, when the oxygen drops down on an airplane, you take an oxygen and fix yourself first. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Uh, the buck stops here. All those things, yeah. Hang in there, baby. That's cat. <laughs> when I was cats. Wait, what fall. did Kojak say? Huh? Oh, here's looking at, no, I love you, baby, or something. Hang on, sweetie. No, he said. Buckle up, sweetheart. Baby, something. What did he say? Uh, Justin Bieber was baby, baby, baby. Who's that now? Which detective is he? Detective Bieber? I don't know that. You laugh now, but in about 10 years on HBO, it'll be a prestige pilot. Detective Bieber. Yeah. Or Detective Tony Vutto, parentheses, Justin Bieber. Maybe it'll be at Sundance in about 10 years. What is it? You know who I wish was a detective would have stayed? Now, John is, Bolton. Who? He ain't no detective. He's a he's an author is what he is now. He's got a detective gimmick, that big mustache. Well, that's true. He's got that going, yeah. And he has, and uh, the other thing is his hobby is war with Iran. So he's got two things. It's like, it's like Kojak or. He had a lollipop said, who loves you? Who loves you? Is that it? Who loves you, baby? What did Kojak say? <laughs> who loves you, baby? I that's, think that's it. Is that you got to say it like Telly Savalas. I can't say it like him, but that's what he said, yeah. Because you're thinking of it. Here's looking at you, kid, which is Humphrey Bogart. Oh, yeah. He, he's dead, too, isn't he? They yep. all are. Yeah. Thank God. Bolton's still kicking. He's still alive. He's still he's living living in a way he never lived before. It, it, this many people saying his name, talking about him, he ain't used to this. This is a new new kind of celebrity for him, I think. Well, as a, as a tool of the left, he must be enjoying. How did we, did you, when... He came on board the Trump administration. Is this where you thought we'd wind up with him right now? No, there's the last thing I expected out of John Bolton. I, you know, if he's telling the truth, and this book ain't out yet, this is all you know, leaks and here and there, which I'm sure it's it's all true. I mean, we know it, so we'll see. Just not where I saw him. Actually, the first thing I said, when, you know, when he got uh, Trump got him, I'm like, well, there goes, you know, here goes a war with Iran. Get ready for this. We shot one missile at him or what, or shot, you know, one thing or killed one man, I should say, which is still, you know, and then, uh, that boat was already gone before that. He wasn't even around to enjoy that. I think, I think more back in hindsight, he did that to spite John Bolton more than anything else about killing any general. He's like, tell you, get, get him out, get rid of Bolton. And I like, now watch this. I'm going to really, I'm going to insult him on Twitter and then this will really get him. See what you're missing out on? Or well, it is sort of a monkey paw situation where Bolton's like, oh, more than anything, I'd like uh, war with Iran. How about war with Iran, but you have to write a book first and make Trump mad at you? What a strange collection of people that we've been talking about for four years. From Bolton to Pompeii. I mean, is this who you thought would be running the... The country is Bolton and Pompeo and and Donald Trump, and they're all from like different periods of us being mad at them. Stephen Miller still in the background. We say we're so we're not even paying attention to the new like m travel bans, Muslim bans. Any way they can use this coronavirus to be racist, they're going to do that. Yep. State Miller got they got email after email of him uh, talking it up with white supremacists and, and all that, and that didn't even hardly break the surface of the news. So you're like, yeah, well, uh, I don't think, sure, maybe he did some crimes, but this don't rise to the level of uh, of uh, kicking him out of office to help help a country. I think it like it's a lot of ways it helps the country. Like, how does it not help the country? I think it's the question kick him out how does that benefit the nation not kicking him out 
And everybody remembered that there was a day after the Mueller report went away for him that he started doing this. So Lord knows what he's going to do now between now and the election. He's going he gonna to cheat every which way he can. I mean, we, we can talk about all this. We can talk about in the Bolter book. It says that he was in the room two months before Giuliani, Mulvaney. How you say his name? Cipollone. Cipollone, who's hey. up there defending him, was in there in the room. They're saying now that somebody needs to get him for, you know. Trump administration's blocked emails where Trump is actually talking about the damn plan to shake down Ukraine and to like no this matters it, it really doesn't matter we get read all the the from the five or six supposedly moderate yet Lev Parnas putting out a new uh, a video tape a new let you know something new every damn week and all of them knew this every one of them knew this they just had already said they don't care we know he did it yeah we know we this don't is, care and this you can fill our time you you expect me to sit here for another two weeks and you keep Telling me that it's something I already damn well know. It ain't going to change my mind. You can bring every person in the world in here. It don't make a damn difference. I'm still going to, you know, if you want to do that, drag it out, like I said. Drag it out. But the more they drag it out and the more they hear, the more that's on TV. It's going to be on TV anyway. You don't think Bolton's going to be on every damn news show trying to sell his book? He going to be on everything, maybe not Fox, but everything else he's going to be on saying this on TV. So it ain't going away. Do you think this Lev Parnish is going to be quiet now? He just, he's not going to put out any more tapes or anything else now that says, well, they acquitted him. I guess this is all useless. I mean, he can always get a YouTube channel. Yeah. Be an influencer on Instagram. Damn, uh, Nancy Pelosi can call Bolton and pardon us, and we can keep investigating over there. But, I mean, we're just going to fill our times with the details of what he has done wrong for the next year. Everybody knows you did it. But we're worried about that while they obviously are not really worried about it. I mean, he gets mad every once in a while, but I think their eyes are on making sure He wins. I see a lot of conspiracy theories on Twitter where they're like, you know, they just seem so confident. It's almost like they already know that they're going to win. So none of this matters because they can do and say whatever they want because the fix is in. I don't know if the fix is in, but if they start just act, they don't care about any of this. Whether they know they can win or not. I mean, they're, they're just doing everything they can to make sure they win. I don't know if the fix is in, but they're like, well, I guess if we cheat and we say we cheat and there's a trial and we're just, ah, we did it. And no Republicans vote. I I mean, it's fine. I guess that's the fix being in. I don't think we have to be paranoid like there was a backroom meeting. Because even if there was, it's going to become public. It doesn't really matter what they do. It's the fact that nobody is going to hold them accountable. No. So we can dwell on the facts of what they did. But we're having all these fake trials that don't mean anything in the end. I don't have a... I don't have a... This is what I'm supposed to say. What we need to do is, but I don't know what, I don't know what that is. I guess just work on what, what is the answer, Jackie? I keep trying to vote him out. Whether they got, whether they got it rigged or not, all he can do is vote. All you can get, I mean, at this point, nobody else going to do, the people that are in office right now ain't going to do a damn thing about it. So either vote them out or try to vote the president out and see what happens. And if you don't get, if you don't get mad about it, if you hate it, but don't get mad about it where people know, then ain't gonna, you might as well be Lamar Alexander. Yep. And I mean... And this is going to be the worst. I'm dreading this. Watch it. You have an election. It'll be real close. He wins. Then about three months into his second term, they find out he cheated. They show how he cheated. They show precisely everybody comes forward. Then they go back there and impeach him again. Goes over the Senate. If we hadn't taken over the Senate... Same thing again. Maybe the same, same thing. thing. Same that's, thing. That's, that's the problem. That's like the worst part of it. We know that he's going to do everything he can to cheat and of win. Of course. He's gonna, it's going to come out that he's lied to us. He's made a bunch of money on stuff. Anything you can imagine has probably already happened. And he's so stupid when he does it. It's so easily seen in it, that, he, that he did it. He's going to get caught. He's definitely going to get caught doing it. But, of course, what does he care? Catch me over and over again. I don't give a damn. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to do nothing about Nobody's it. Nobody's going to do nothing about it. So it, we got to figure out how we can do something about it. Everybody's got to get mad. Everybody's got to care. Everybody's got to hold people accountable. We can't get too lost in the details of what he's done. I mean, somebody, some staffer's got to 
dredge all this up so that people can have talking points. But like we we spent hours on here talking about this, and then and they don't give a shit. No, we're like, what's their strategy? What's their plan? What's their plot? What's the fix? It's just like, eh, whatever. We're just gonna keep doing. It. I mean, Mitch McConnell did that with. It's the Mitch McConnell strategy. Yeah, I mean, it's completely see through. Everybody loves a winner. He don't. He don't give a damn. You play dirty or whatnot. I'm grim rape. Well, he don't care. You say whatever. He's destroyed the Senate. He don't go so far to say he's destroyed the country. On and on. He be like, yep. I, at least you know, destroyed it the way I wanted it. It'd be neat to see him lose. That's one I'd like to see lose. I seriously, Trump can win again, but we take a Senate back. You know, not we. That would be fun. Democrats take it. Whoever, independents, whatever. You I want think to take if you're it. against Trump, it's a we at this point. Well, it's yeah. a big weird car full of assholes. I weird for me saying it. I ain't used to saying we is referring to Democrats, but I guess that's what it is. You're right. That's what it is now. Everybody who ain't against Trump is a we. Everybody who is against Trump is a we. Very I, much. We're it, all we's. Except if Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, it, but that's that's a little still shaky. I mean, they're in the back be. seat arguing, yeah, and their kids are fighting, booing each other, on and on, yeah. But they we still got to all be in this car. Got to be. I mean, we're you may not think you're in the car. It's a big car. Maybe you think you're not in the same car. But she's like in the middle seat of the van, and you didn't know she snuck in there. We're all in the same van. Yeah. Get used to it. Thank God. Yeah. All these weirdos, misfits. Yeah, just hopefully enough of them come out and vote. Whoever Freaks gets the damn perverts. They nominate. Hey, yeah, even if it's Bloomberg. Yeah. It won't be. Yeah, well, no. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess the lesson that we keep learning is like weird, egotistical, petty, white billionaires get what they want so shit i guess we're looking at bloomberg and yeah, bloomberg be terrible i mean i don't know anything's better than this I, I, every, every time i see biden on an interview or something like what no i can't still better another rambling crazy person but still probably not gonna lock as many people up in cages as what does you got to think about also the littlest thing that they've done wrong whatever it is whatever they can dig up will turn into like benghazi too yep can you imagine what would would Hillary Clinton even still be in office by this point if she'd won, or would they have impeached her already? Probably would have already, yeah, found a way to. They wouldn't have to find. They already had the way. They had Benghazi. They had emails. That's all they had to do. They would they would have wore that out. They We'd have wore it out over and over again. They Charlie fucking it. Daniels tweeted this week: Benghazi ain't going away. I mean, it's nice that he never. It's nice that some things don't change. I mean, he's been doing that for years. That's just your old old pastime. It's like him. you go yeah. see him in concerts. You want to hear Devin went down to Georgia. Exactly. You look him up on Twitter. You want to see him say, Benghazi ain't going away. Yep. So, it's, I mean, I, I, you know, on the one hand, it's nice. On the other hand, it's it god awful. But on the, you know, the nice hand, it's nice. Like the good songs of his. Sitting on a bar stool, acting like a darn fool. Yep. Remember? Oh, I remember, yeah. Remember the good times? Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome back, people. You're listening to Red State Update. It's a place, more of a podcast, really. Where Jackie Brawls, my friend sitting over here to my right and left, left, which one is this? Huh? And me, Dunlap the Man, hold forth on a variety of issues, mostly about how Trump is an asshole. And then in the last part of it, we do the local sponsors from right chair in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yep. The geographic center of Tennessee, a jewel nestled in her rolling green hills. If you ever get a chance to drive through, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, you ought to take up, take whoever up on that offer. Whoever offered you that chance to drive through it, take them up on it. Sure. Are you want ride? Th- you want ride through Murfreesboro? Don't be like, huh? Be like, hell yeah! Anytime anybody offers you a ride where you don't have to do the driving, you should take them up on it. I think anytime. Yeah. It don't matter who or when yeah. or what they look like or what their intentions are. Yeah. 
Take him up on that. You won't you won't come with me? Yes, sir. For free? Because them Uber people, they want your credit cards. Oh, they, I saw. If the price they, is right, get yeah. in the car. If a, if a Uber's, Uber is right, right, Stoke, Uber's. Yeah, that's they, not just people offering you a ride, and then at the end, they're like, oh, you know, that's $20. They want your credit card numbers and things like that. I wouldn't give any, I don't know you, I don't know who's driving around, I want my credit card number, that's what don't make a bit of sense to it me really why people is, do that. That's not exactly how that. Well, just, if they want you, give me your credit card numbers, I'll take you wherever you want to go. To hell with you, I ain't give you my damn credit card number, my bank numbers and stuff. I don't know who, sure, if you got a driver's license, you can get me point A, point B without having your ex, fine, but you don't. You don't need all my, you know, bank's information for that. That's just me personally how I feel about that. Did did what? Did Christy say something on the phone whether she's getting us some hot chicken or not? What did Christy say? She didn't think she's going to be able to. What? She doesn't think she's going to be able to do it. Why'd she offer to do it? it, it well, she didn't. It, she got sick. Got sick. Yeah, she hurt her knee. Well, this seems hurt. That ain't getting sick. That's hurting your knee. It's two different things. Well, I said, what happened? I do your thing on the phone back to her. Said, as long as you can get back, if she already got the hot chicken, she might as well bring it. She don't get it and then stay at home. Plus, we give her some money, didn't we? Yeah, she said she'd uh, give it back to us when she felt better. Well, the money or the chicken? The money. Uh -huh. Never mind. Well, I well actually, I don't know. Maybe the chicken. She's going to have to do one or the other. Hold on. Let me text her. She wants your bank number? No, she ain't getting my bank numbers for chicken. No, she ain't. She said she can't come to work and mop up up there because she's real sick in the knee. And that she's going to give us that money back soon. No. And when she gets to feeling better, it may be a couple of weeks. A couple know. weeks. I guess she tore it up pretty bad. I give, but she said if you give her your bank number, she'll get an Uber and drive that chicken over here to us. Wait, you gave her twenty five dollars, and I gave her twenty five dollars. She was gonna come back with a big one of them big things of hot chicken. That was our sponsor money that we made. Which it was, sounds was, like a lot of money when you say it like that. Well, but, that's what it is. You gave? Did you give her twenty five dollars? I said, well, I give her. And that, that pays for us to eat. We got to eat to do this. That's just eating, not driving. But That's it, why she needs your bank number. Well, I'm letting people know we ain't taking the sponsor number, just eating on it all the time. But when you do this all day, sometimes you got to take a break and eat. Well, so I'll, lunch is, is a, I don't know if it's a tax write-off or anything. I'll be honest. This. When I get that $25 of sponsor money, my first thought is, what can I eat with this? Well, I, hot chicken sounded good to me when she said, I'll get to, you know, he'll get me. And I said, well, here, all I got is $25. She said, that'll well, do it. we didn't know she was going to get so sick. Well, what? Hurt your knee, I ain't getting sick. She going to have to give that back one way or the other, I, preferably before two weeks' time. She said it may be two or three weeks. She may have to PT on it. Well, we still took her $25, so we got to do a sponsors. That's what we're going to do. $25, that goes mostly to keep a computer running, the lights on, uh, all that sort of stuff. Computer needs a lot of. You had to take this in last week for them to do something or other. Well, yeah. Apple, oh, Apple I Man. need to uh, get you bank numbers for the Apple Man. No. Hello, no. You like crazy person puts your numbers on a computer. Everybody looks at that. No, Everybody no, gets on the computer. That's old. Nowadays, well, everybody old. does it. It's new. No. The new way of doing it is you just give me your bank numbers. Nope. Now give them to the Apple Man. And I ain't Christy. giving no no nobody get my bank numbers. I'll the tell Christy to drop off some no. money to the Apple Man. No. Uber over to Hot Chicken and uh -huh. then Uber over here. I All don't. she needs is she bank No, we already put a fifty dollar deposit on this chicken. She can want whatever. You can wish and hope in one hand or the other, uh, holding a turd. Whatever the saying is, Language. I ain't, I ain't gonna give nobody my bank numbers. What is it? It's shitting. Excuse my language, though, but the old saying, shit in this hand and hey. wish for another. What is the saying? I can't remember. Yeah, wish for another hand. Wish for another shit hand. Shit in one in hand, hand, wish for another hand. Because so, one hand's got shit in it, yeah. so that one's out. I didn't ever, couldn't remember the saying. It's old, old Something like saying, that. Yeah. Here's looking at you, baby. Shit hand. Here's looking at you, shit hand. No, he said, who loves you, baby, is what. Who loves you, baby? Is what tell us about. He got a little lollipop. Says, "Who loves you, baby?" Then they talk to him before he puts it in his mouth. 
He's like, who who loves you, baby? You know, if he could have cussed on there, you know, he'd be like, who loves you, baby? Shit in one hand, no. shit in the other. He wouldn't say that. And then he got that sucker in there going. No. I'm doing my sponsor now, so we, like I said, the money, $25 usually don't go to hot chicken, but we've been here for a while. Dad thought we'd get us some lunch. I didn't know why she needed both of her $25 years and mine. I don't understand that, but so be it. Well, she needs you. What? Bank numbers, too. She don't want my. Nobody's getting my bank numbers. Well, now she's got to go get some gauze. Yeah. Well, anyhow, $25 helps us keep going, keep us on the computer on and on and on. I don't on. know why you hired her, honestly. She's always banging her knee up. We also got the. Pa- what is it? Padrones. Padrones. Go over Patreon. Red there State Update. And uh, if you give us a dollar uh, a month, we sure do appreciate it. Help if you us give us two dollars, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. If you give us three dollars, fifty cents. It don't make a difference. Whatever fifty you, cents, we appreciate uh, it. We do. But I tell you what, if you give five dollars more, uh, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, but you also get to listen twenty extra minutes with Jack and Dunlap. That's us here. You get a little extra of us. If you like us enough to, to, to give us $5, which is shocking to me, but God bless you all, each and every one of you for doing it, you gonna, we're going to love you back in the best way we can in 20 minutes' time, and that's what we'll do and wow, continue to like do. that's like a Barry White song you just said. What is it? Love you back in the best way we can in 20 minutes' time. Barry who? Love you back. The best way that we can. Well, that's what you get for in twenty minutes time. That's not very wide. I don't know what that was. More like fastball. Well, we still got to do local sponsors here and uh, Murfreesboro, and I got a good sponsor this week. And you might remember this sponsor from last week, uh, but it uh, they decided they didn't particularly care. What? For the performance that they was given, for the money that they paid, yet they still want to. You want took to, my sponsor for last week. They give me twenty five dollars. You talk to them. I didn't take nobody from nothing. I didn't call them up and say I want you to do. I want to do you. Uh, you know, do you as my sponsor. Listen, uh, I didn't have, say nothing. They came to me and, and and complained about you first and foremost. Come to me, asked where you were. If you I said hell, I don't know where he is. It's, it's, a, it's a weekend. He drunk somewhere. It's and true. I didn't know. And then they said, well. well he, you messed it up pretty bad. I'll put it that I did. way. I did. I did mess it up pretty mess bad. Up pretty but bad. in my defense, if you ain't listened to last week's episode, my sponsor from last weekend, apparently Jackie's, Turncoat Jackie's, this week. They called me up off me. I got to have sponsors keep going. We, I was I, I was hoping we'd have a, a big pile of hot chicken here waiting for us by the time we did this. But I guess that ain't the case. But anyway, either way. It's hard to say. The sponsor is hard to say. Jackie, I, you know, if you can do a better job saying it, then uh, God bless you. Because uh, you're going to need some blessings. Don't well, I can say whatever. If you give me $25, I'll be sure and do my best to say it right. And it's a good sponsor. We are professionals. And I tell you what, this is local in Murfreesboro. So Lord knows if you got a trampoline out in the backyard, kids jump on it. Have big time. Kids pretty much the only people jump on trampoline, isn't it? I don't know anybody else. I think a PT. Christy said she had, when she had some oh, PT yeah. on her knee, she had to do some had jumping do on some jumping. But also that's how she fucked her knee up. So. Hey. Watch I guess mouth. it's, I guess you got, if she's you do it the trampoline. wrong way. When she's on the way to get hot chicken, she stops and gets on the trampoline. That don't make a damn bit of sense Oh, you to know me. her. She's like, uh, she just throws caution to the wind. She's one of them. I don't make any damn. You see a trampoline no. driving around, you're like, oh, they won't mind if I do a little bit of jumping that on this. bunch of bull. You ever look out in your yard, see a woman jumping up and down on that? There? It's probably Christy. Well. I don't see any, I don't know anybody personally got a trampoline. I may know a couple people had a bunch of kids got one. Otherwise, I don't know anybody. I have been on the YouTube show. <laughs> Watch them goats on trampoline. You remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anything where a goat bounces. Oh, oh, the goat bouncing on the trampoline. Yeah, they bounce on anything, but a trampoline is particularly funny. They're for me, just because of the surface of it, and they can't quite get traction on it. And, you know, it always leads to a good time. Uh, get us clip of the week. Uh, goat on trampoline. Get on uh, YouTube. I believe there's more than one of those. I think there's a two or three uh, goats on trampoline. Oh, I'm sure they. It'd be worth getting a bunch of goats just for the YouTube content. Well, I tell you what, TikTok. I tell you what, if you if you do have trampoline and a bunch of goats are on it and they making a mess on it and and doing all that. As funny as it is, Lord knows, goat can't be a mess. Uh. Back in goat school, I knew that. Back goat class, I I learned to, to you know clean up after goat. 
the you know the least amount of mess you could have having a goat. I was able to do that, but you still gonna have a mess. So if you got a bunch of goats on trampoline, leaving a mess, stains here and there, the springs broken, everything else, because they gonna tear it up. Uh, that's when you need to call to sh- it, to sh- don't jump till you check check with Trump. Trump, no. huh? Nope. What do you mean no? You said check with Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. It's to shut, to shut, t, chump. Don't jump till you check with chump. It's trampoline uh, repair. Uh, that's uh, I'm saying it. I, it sound. I'm not trying to sound like I'm saying, uh, uh, you know, pregnant shit. Excuse my language. I'm trying to chump. It's don't jump till you, don't jump till you check with chump, chump. Right? Shump. That's she, it. Shump, yep. shump. That's it. It ain't Trump. It's Shump. Uh, and it, you think that's confused. His name Donald J. Trump. Uh, Donald D-O-N-A-W-L-D-J-J-J-A-Y. Donald J. Shump. Now, some people, like you said it. That's not that confusing. It's just Donald with a W. What? I, it's don't jump till you mess with Trump. Trump. I did this fine earlier today. Listen, if you're listening, Donald, I, and that is Donald with a W. I don't I hope no other Donald's listening, if you know what I mean. I sure as hell don't want him listening to me unless he learn a thing or two, but Lord knows he ain't never going to learn nothing. But as far as uh, learning about trampoline and knowing how to fix it, you ain't going to get anybody to do it better than Donald J. Trump. He's going to come over there and take care of your, your, your trampoline. Uh, it'll, it'll be, if it held four goats last week, after he gets the, his hands on it, it's going to hold uh, eight goats to jumping. So uh, you check with chump. Ch- and also, if you have a, a goat, uh, uh, you know, on your trampoline, you don't want them to get loose. They can jump right out of there. So what you want to do is get a pen put around it. And that's pants pans around your uh, re- uh, chumps. <sighs> Repair trampolines. Pants, P-E-N-S-E, pans, a little pan around trampoline, keep, you know, and, it, and you can get a little covering or something like that with it, and I think comes with it. So, yeah, don't you jump till you check with Trump. Sponsor for the week. You keep saying Trump, though. Huh? You said no, Trump I didn't. Again. I said, ch- what it sound like? It sounds like it, but I'm not saying it. That's what it sounds it's like. It's hard because you Trump trampoline, Trump, Trump trampoline. Trump trampoline. Don't jump till you check with Trump. Chump. Trampoline. Trump. No, not trampoline. Trump. Trump. No, I said yes. I don't need your help either. That's what went wrong last week. Well, I don't so think you're doing that great of a job. Well, yourself. I did better than you, I think. He's got a bad enough time. People mad at him that like Trump because he didn't change his name all the way over to Trump. Well, I can see if he was that close, he might as well take an extra step. But he, that, that, And I, people who hate Trump mad at him because his name sounds so much like Trump. Yep. Yeah. And then you on here mangling it both of ways. Look, look, he's apolitical, all right? Regardless what his name sounds like, I don't know if he's... Well, that's political in itself. Well, I don't know which side he likes to vote on one way or the other. Independence or Republican, Democrat. I don't know, but if you got a broken trampoline, you need it fixed. Do you think trampolines are only for goats? Because this was a very goat-centric ad. And I I can see him having problems with that. Well, I mean problems with it. You're supposed to fix it no matter how... You know, it don't matter what's jumping on it. He didn't. They didn't imply. You know, I refuse to fix something if a the goat's on it or whatever. It just says don't jump till you check with Trump. And he comes over and fix the trampoline, huh? Chump. I said it. It wasn't goat yet because I thought of that little video and I just thought, you know, if anything gonna tear up a trampoline, it's gonna be a goat. Lord no. That's true. So I just you and know, that also using the pence pins will be. That makes that gives yeah, them that have a reason. More, yeah, yeah. Because last time they said keep out uh, coyotes and varmints, I'm like, well, that's weird. Well, that's but you do keep want to something do that. in, yeah, instead of out. You don't want the ghosts to get away. Yeah, if they're your goats, you especially don't want if you, there's that many coyotes out there. Well, that's true. But yeah, if you got you know, if it, I know plenty about goats, and and, and that's the reason I, you know I thought of that video, and that's where it went from there. And I know they they tear up plenty of things. Hey, I'll think about that, and I ain't telling uh, Donald uh, 
had a runny business, but like a little mascot or something, little goat character. You know what I mean? Along the side of the car, his, his van, his, his repair van, little goat jumping off a thing or tearing it up somehow. Like a little goat crying because he tore up a trampoline, right? That's your, that's your, your, your mascot or whatever you want to call and, it. And he's crying up behind him. Here he comes to fix it. Yeah, it makes everybody happy. But, you know, you don't have to run with that. You can. You're welcome to it. But I just, you, you advertise how you want. I did the best job I could uh, with the name that you had. I think I did a pretty good job. Guess I'll find out next week if you give me $25 again. I must say you said Trump seven out of eight times. I did not. Just, don't Trump till you check with Trump. You just said it again. Said what? Shump. No. Should be Shump. I said. You said Trump. Trump. Trample, trample, never mind. I did it. Well, Jackie, first of all, I think you're a, a treasonous turncoat. Why? A regular Benedict Arnold over Why? here. I hate you don't know about Or it. Um, I guess instead of Benedict Arnold, uh, nowadays we could just use any Republican senator as a uh, as a symbol for treasonous turncoats. Yeah. And, or you, for that matter, Why because that you took my sponsor from last week. And I thought we had a code of conduct. Here. I didn't take a it. A gentleman's they, agreement. They decided. They are the ones that have the money. I don't. Then you should have said, no, sir, nope. Mr. Shump. I will not take your money. I'm on first name basis with him. I just call him Donald. With a W. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's sometimes you need to stress that. Anyway, Jackie, I've got a sponsor this week, and I don't care if you like him or not. Well, I don't either, I guess. After what you've done, I'm questioning our entire partnership. Oh, shut the hell up. Horses. Skittish. Nervous. On yeah. edge. Well, yeah. The slightest sound can cause them to mess themselves. Kick, whinny. Lie down in fright. Lie down. If you've got a nervous horse... Or run away before they lie down, I think. And a horse stall door hinge that's a creaking. Why? Then you need to get to Howie Calhoun's to stop that squeaking. Folks, Howie Calhoun's squeak free horse stall door hinges. Wait a minute. Is a godsend for the nervous horse. I agree with all that, but that was my sponsor last week. How'd you get huh? that one? What? Are you just doing this out of spite to me? Or did you get $25 from them? You tell me the truth right Howie now. Howie Calhoun, who we all know is an unreasonable man. If I know two things about Howie Calhoun, is that he has squeak-free horse stall door hinge technology, and he's an unreasonable man. Oh, and right. he said that you had not performed up to his unreasonable what? expectations. What did I do wrong about that? You just kept interrupting me. He, if anything, he'd have been mad at you. Why would he? He's got high you? standards, and he says his he was put on this earth by the good Lord above to keep nervous horses uh, mellow and easy, keep them keeping them easy. He says I don't have any argument with that. That's fine. But if I don't know where I come into it, how I did it wrong, I didn't. I did it just as well as you did, if not better. You you the one kept interrupting me. Why would he you turn said around? And ask you one didn't that? have a good enough answer as to why I couldn't just go down there and get a door hinge. For my door to keep from waking Granny up when I come home drunk. Because it's two different kind of hinges. One's for a horse stall door, and one is your Granny's door. It's two different kinds. Because it's two different kinds of hinges, I just Jackie, said that. And one is for people doors, and one is horse I stall door that. hinges. I said that. Horse that. stall door hinges. Horse stall door hinges. That's what I said last week. Well, he said you did. You weren't quick enough on your feet. I mean, you know how Trump watches his little minions on... Fox and Friends are on NBC, Chuck uh. Todd, whoever they are, wherever they sit. And he calls them up and says, you did good. You looked fat. You're out. You had a zit on your nose. You were stupid. I got bored. I'm hungry. I just pissed my pants. I'm tired. Zzz. What? That's what he was. He was looking at you the same way oh, Trump looks shit. at Mike Pompeo. All right. Which is 
Well, I don't want anybody. An uncomfortable sentence for me to say. I don't want anybody to look at me like I'm Mike Pompeo. I thought I did a pretty good job. But you did have a point. I will say this. If he's so high and mighty about say, two different kind of hinges, why couldn't you put a hinge like that on the door? If you're quiet, I, I, you say for the nervous horse, hell, I know tons of nervous people. People are nervous as hell, constantly. People don't even want to leave a damn apartment. And if they have to open the door and it makes a noise, they run right back in. So you should, if you if you have a technology to help a horse, by God, you should have used that same technology. If the Lord's bestowed that upon you, you need to be, you know, it's a great responsibility to, the, to what is it? <sighs> Spider-Man. But if if you if you are able to do that, why not help out your fellow man as well? Well, I wish you really cared about your fellow man, but I can tell you feelings got hurt because Howie Calhoun heard me as a superior pitch man. Oh, whatever the he hell. He don't give a shit about people's doors. He don't give a shit. Excuse she about nothing if he's going to be no, that he way. does. Well, he cares about horse stall door hinges. No, he, horse he, stall he door hinges. Want, he just wants to d- do it for money. He don't care about a nervous horse. He's just trying to, you know, he got a bunch of grain sitting around. He got to give away for free. Oh, yeah, you get a full refund know and do. a sack of grain I if your door hinge squeaks. You don't have to tell me that. I know that already. I said it last week. But if he, if that's all it is, just a money-making scheme. Oh, I know it. Uh, people, the poor nervous horses, I'll, I'll get I'll get those people's money. Well, the poor nervous people need that doors silent as well. So if, you, if you're just in, in the market to get money off of people and to help out a beast, help out your fellow man. God give you that technology. God give you the brain to make something, uh, you know, special like a horse door stall Horse stall door hinge. Horse stall door hinge. Horse stall door hinge to keep it from a creaking. Lord knows you should have made it for people too, because I said I know people twice as nervous as a horse. Well, let me let me tell you something. Good Lord above, give you two eyeballs to read a package that says horse stall door horse, hinge. I know, and I did that on memory because I ain't got no piece of paper anymore. I threw it away last week. They, they I didn't know they went somewhere else. Well, fine. I hope you. I hope they like a job you did. I didn't hear you give any good enough reason besides it uh, being do different hands. No, because no, I'll give you the reason, but you're gonna think I'm crazy. Why? Huh? I he said. I said to him, "Look, I'll take your money because I'm I'm craving some hot chicken, and, and I know Christy's got business next to the hot chicken stand." Well, I'm looking forward to that. Hot and he said two things. He said, "I don't too. I don't know who Christy is," and then he said, "I'll prove it to you." I'm nothing if not an unreasonable man. What? He's really leaning into this unreasonable stuff. But he said, I'll prove it to you. It's for old time's sake. Prove what? He give me a horse stall door hinge. When a Howie Calhoun squeak free horse stall door hinges. And I took it home. And I put it up on my my door. Down in Granny's basement. I had to have somebody come help me. I don't know how to do. I'm not good with my hands. And later that night, I come home drunk. I start opening it. And I said, shit, this ain't squeaking at all. It ain't creaking at all. My anxiety is feeling pretty good right now. And then all of a sudden, as if by an unseen hand, it just, the hands, the screws started unscrewing themselves. Why? They, and then they clunk, fell down on the floor. And then the hands glowed red hot and flew across the room. What the hell are you talking about? Busted my uh, old Arby's glass I had in there. I had the Pink Panther's son on there, Panky. What? Busted that all the shit. That was worth a lot of money. It was, and then the other horse stall door hinge did it. I only put two up and then the other regular door hinge. I don't know how many you're supposed to have. Maybe my problem is I got too many. Would well, you take those hinges back to... The person's door stall hinge stayed on and the other two f- flung themselves off. What? Then I went back to Howie Calhoun and he said, I, I said, explain that. And he said, I wish I could. What? He said, I've, got, I've been sitting on this squeak free Horse stall door hinge technology so long. I said, if I could make a million fucking dollars, hey. Dunlap, just fucking Watch your mouth. shit ton of money. Money coming out my fucking asshole. All right, enough. I don't need to hear it. I, I told him, I said, Jackie's not going to like his language. I don't. Hey, you right about that. 
And he said, I wish I could explain it. I'm leaving money on the table. But there's something about these door hinges. They will not go on people doors. He said, you tell Jackie Broads if he wants to come down here and take a look himself, he's welcome to. I don't need to. He said, I'll cut him in on the money. Well, half it. I said, what about me? He said, here's your $25. Get you some chicken. Well, I'd take those hinges. I said, why are you? He said, I'm unreasonable. I'd take those hinges straight back, get my free refund and my thing of grain. What kind of grain would you get? Whatever kind he's got. You just, I, I don't really think it's grain. I think it's sawdust. What is it? I think it's sawdust. sawdust. I think he went to the damn, what's the place where they make the sawmill, where they make the wood. I think he just filled sacks up because he says, it's not, I'm never going to have to fulfill this promise. And that also, by the way, Jackie, that guarantee is for horse stall door hinges. It's for horse stall doors, yeah. not people doors. All right. All right. But you're welcome to try it. I don't want to try it anymore. If he if he, if he likes the way you say it better than me, I don't care. First no, thing I meant about it. put the hinges on your door. And I see ain't if gonna they put nothing on nothing. Off. No, no. Woke Granny up. It was terrible. I, it sounds crazy to me. I don't believe one word of that. But all right, fine. If that's his excuse, if that's what he's gonna say, if he puts you up to saying that, then he deserves whatever kind of business he's gonna get over that. So that is Shump. What is it? Don't jump till you check with Trump. Shump. Trump. Trampoline repair. Trampoline. Trampo- yes. And mine is, what was it? Ho- Howie Calhoun's horse stall door hinges. And I should be getting half that $25 for saying that right. I honestly think we did better when we had them switched last week. Yeah, you're probably right. Next week, we'll try it again. We'll try it again. All right. All right. Bye. So what's all next week's a big week? What's all happening next week? Well, you got the Iowa caucuses, that, so we'll know who won Iowa. That's on what day? I believe that's on Monday. Monday, all and right. And Tuesday, you got the State of the Union. State of the Union. Sometime next week, they're going to vote to say Trump's okay and can do whatever he wants to. And yep. America, as we've known it for hundreds of years, is over, buried, so long. Right. So yep. that's sometime next week. Uh-huh. And then I think Friday, there's another Democratic debate in New Hampshire, a post-Iowa Democratic debate. Well, we don't need to cover that. So what? We'll be back on, let's say, Thursday? You want to I don't to- know. Sometime between Thursday and Sunday. New Hampshire. Yeah. We got a lot. We'll put it. We'll shove it all into one, get it all to you. Uh, looking forward to, to talking to y'all. What, next week sometime? Yeah. It's fun. If we get through it.